Statistics and Excel. Histograms and scatter plots with population data. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, and looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet so you can start with that. However, if you do have access to this workbook, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab, having pre-formatted cells within it so you can focus in on the core concepts of the practice problem. Blank tab, only having the data in it so that we can practice formatting the cells within within Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing. We're gonna sort our data into a table format. We're then going to be creating multiple histograms from the data in our table, which is related to population. And then we'll be combining some of that information to get our scatter plots. So let's go on over to the blank tab on the right. If you don't have this data, you can look up similar data related to population, or I believe we've retrieved this from Kaggle. That's K-A-G-G-L-E dot com. So you can look for the data set there and pull it in, and then we can work with this information. So I'm going to delete that. And now I'm going to do the first thing I do every time with our data set. I'm going to first format the underlying formatting that I would like on the Excel sheet. So I'm going to select the entire sheet with the triangle, right click on the selected area and format the entire sheet. I like to go to currency, br negative numbers bracketed and red, remove the dollar sign. And if I scan the data, you'll notice there's no decimals in it. So I can say, let's go ahead and remove the decimals. And so there's my baseline formatting. I'm going to make it bold home tab, font group, and bold. And there we have that. I'm going to hold control, scroll in a bit. So now I'm currently at 190% on the scroll in. I'm then going to work with my headers. So I'm going to select the header in A1, drag over to J1. Notice that nothing is in column K. It's just that this one's hanging over into column K. So what I'm going to do is go up top and go to uh, the home tab. We can go to the alignment. We might want to center these and we might want to wrap them so that we can see them. So there we have that. Now I'm going to insert a table around the entire data set. Now note that you have blank data over here. So sometimes that can kind of throw off where the table will be put in place. But I believe if we just select any cell, the table will properly be put in place. So let's go to a insert tab, table group, and insert the table. Dancing ants around A1 to J79, I believe that says, which looks right. So we're going to say, let's go ahead and insert that. So once done, sometimes you might want to, to take your tabs up top. I'm going to select all of them and make them a little bit smaller, right? So because what it did is it widened out the titles so that you could see the whole title uh, without wrapping it. But we entered the wrapping, so I'm gonna select the entire thing and, and then I'm going to put my cursor in between any of these cells and make it smaller and that will make all of them the same size. Now you may not need all of them the same length of smallness, so you could adjust them as you so choose. So this one, for example, we might make that a little bit smaller even still. And so there we have our data. So 
our data, uh, we have the, the name, we have the population, we've got the age less than 18, age 18 to 34, 35 uh, to 65, 65 plus, number of households, families, and number of households uh, with 100K plus. All right, so based on this data, let's first just make our histograms with this data. I can take any piece of this data. We could sort the data. It's currently sorted, by the way, A to Z by uh, location. And we could sort it by population. So I can sort it by population. And of course, I can see, uh, get an idea of the data by population. I could sort it, you know, by, by age less than 18 and so on and so forth. And then we can go through here and we can make a histogram from each of these individual data sets if we so choose. So we can do that. I'm going to select, for example, this data set, the total population. And I can do that by selecting the drop down up top. If I want to include like the title, sometimes I like to just go to the control shift method and then the down arrow. And that takes me all the way down. I want to be back up top to the data. So I'm going to hold down control backspace to get back up to the top. And then I'm going to go to the insert tab and we're going to go to the charts and let's make a histogram. Histogram. Pull, pull that on over to the right. I'm just going to copy the title here and I'm going to put that control C and I'm going to put that in the title. Now I'm going to do these fairly fast so that, so that, cause we've seen these techniques before. We're just doing it all in one uh, kind of data set now. So we're pulling different items from this one data set. So you can see this is basically skewed to the right and you can adjust the buckets and so on. Let's take the second data set and I'm going to put my cursor up top, hold down control shift down. So there we have it. Now I'm going to hold down control and select the backspace, getting back up to the top. And then I might want a better position. I'm going to be like right here so that when I insert the histogram, it's going to put it pretty close to where I want it to be. So I'm going to go to the insert tab, charts, histogram, add another histogram. So there it is. So, and then I can copy the title. And I'm going to put that in the title of the histogram. So title of the histogram. All right, let's do a few more of these. I'm going to go then to age. What is that doing there? Get out of there. We're going to go next from age 18 to 34. So I'm going to select E1, holding down control shift down arrow to the bottom of the data set. And then I'm holding down control backspace back up to the top of the data set. Then I'm going to scroll down just a little bit to be where I want to be, which is right here, somewhere around K30. Insert tab and histogram drop down, enter. There we have that one. I'm going to scroll back up, double click in E1, copy the name, control C, put that down here in the title. Okay, I'm going to do the rest of them here. I'm going to put my cursor in uh, age 65 plus, control shift down arrow, and then control backspace, scrolling back down to where I want to place it. Insert tab, charts group, histogram, drop down, histogram, histogram. And then I'm going to double click in G1, select the data, control C or right click and copy and put that in our title. So there we have the title. All right, next one, that was 65. Let's take the total uh, households, control shift down, selecting all the data, control backspace, scrolling down to where we want to place it, insert and then charts and histogram, entering the histogram, pulling it in place, scrolling back up, double clicking on the name, selecting it, control C or right click and copy so that I can then put it right in our title field. All right, let's do the next one. Families, control shift down, 
Control backspace, scrolling down to where I want to place it, which is all the way at the bottom. I could have stayed down there this time. And then insert charts histogram. There we have that one. I'm going to go back up top, double click on the families, copy, and put that in the title. And let's do one more histogram. And I'm going to put my cursor in this one. Now, if I hit control shift down arrow, it doesn't go to the bottom because of those blank cells. So I have to continue selecting control shift down till I get to the bottom. You don't typically want to have blank cells in your data set uh, if, if you can avoid it because that causes some problems. Now this time I'm just going to scroll down and hit insert and charts and histogram. So let's put our histogram down here, double click on the data set up top and copy that and then put that right here. So we'll paste that in. All right. So, and then we might want to make some relationships with, between this data. So let's say we're going to take the total population and see it, you know, if there's a relationship between total population and age less than 18. So let's say total population is dependent X or horizontal variable, and then less than 18 is going to be uh, the dependent in a scatter plot. So now I'll select uh, this one. I'm going to hit control shift down. So there's that data holding control backspace. Now I'm holding control to select the one next to it and then control shift and down again so that I have the second set of data holding control backspace. You could do that by just highlighting and scrolling down. The most intuitive way would be to do it that way. But this way, if you get used to using the keyboard, uh, it could be a little faster. Now I'm going to, I'm going to take the bar here, go to the right so that I'm kind of close to where I want this to actually be placed and then go to the insert tab and go to the uh, scatter or the charts and I want a classic scatter. So there we have it. So we've got the scatter. So if I pull this to the right, there it is. Okay, so I'm going to delete the title because what I really want is to show the X and Y axes. Now in this in this case, the, the X, the one on the left will typically be the one that was on the left. The column on the left will be the dependent or X as we saw in prior presentations with the scatter and the dependent will typically be on uh, the vertical or the Y. So if I add my axes, axes, and I want to look at the titles, I'm going to select the bottom or X axis and hit equals. So you can see that in the bar up top equals, and then I'm going to pick the population, uh, the population, right? This is the population and enter. So now we've got the total population at the bottom. I'm going to select this axis and say equals which you could see up top in the formula bar and we want 18 or less. So there we have it. And so now we can see like as the population goes up, the, the number of people 18 or less has a trend line up, which you would kind of expect because you would expect a larger population to possibly have uh, more, more people within any particular age range. And so you can look at different trends such such as that, right? You can look at a trend and say, well, what if you had people that are that are in the range to have kids? That maybe that would be a stronger correlation between uh, an increase uh, in in them and and the and the number of of kids, right? So you can graph these relationships. If I was going to add a trend line, let's add a trend line. And I want to then more options on the trend line. If I want to add a formula, there's the formula for the trend line. If I go to the box on the left, we can then say maybe I want the trend line to be simply a line. Maybe I want it to be uh, a different color like red. And then maybe I want to glow around it. So I'm going to say let's make it glow. And we'll make it glow uh with 
the orange. Closing that out, let's do another one. Let's say that we were looking at the population versus uh, versus the people that are making over uh, versus over what was that last one here? This one, number households uh, uh, 100K plus. And now this one's missing some data down below, but I think we could still plot with it. So let's say that we're gonna take the population. So we'll compare uh, the population, putting my cursor here, control shift down. So that's the whole thing. And then control backspace back to the top. And then I'm holding down control to select this one, a non-adjacent uh, column, and then control shift down to get to the bottom. It's not at the bottom because there's these blank cells. So I'm gonna have to say control shift down again, control shift down again, and now it's at the bottom. Then I'm gonna say control backspace to get back to the top. I would like to get my cursor somewhere where I want the data. So I'm going to put it over here. And then let's say insert chart and enter our scatter. So there's our scatter. And so now I'll delete this. And let's see. So you can see here we don't have as big a, a correlation. We could still we could still uh, let's plot let's put our axes on here. We're gonna say that we want uh, the axis title and down here, I'm gonna say this equals scrolling to the right. So we had the total population and then this axis, putting my cursor here equals and then we had the number uh, 100K plus. So there we have it. If we put a regression line in here, I'm gonna say add trend line. So there's our trend line. I can add more options to the trend line. Let's make the equation. So we can say, show me the equation. Let's make the trend line uh, orange this time. Let's make it so it's a solid line. Let's go to the colors and say the glow we want now, we can have a, a bigger glow around it. So we can have a wider glow than we had up top. And you can see, although they you could put a trend line around it, you don't, you don't have a, you know, the trend obviously isn't as packed together as a trend like this. So it might not be as meaningful of a trend line. Let's do uh, another one. Uh, let's say that we had then, let's pull up another one. Now, I'm doing these fairly quick because we've seen these charts before. We're just going to practice putting them together now. Let's say we had the uh, total population and we're going to compare that to, we're going to compare the total population to, let's say, families over here. So again, you would think as the populations go up, you'd probably have more families, you would think. Let's check that one out, see how close that trend line is. So we're going to say population. I'm going to say control shift down. So that takes the whole thing. I'm gonna say control backspace. Now I'm holding control down so I can select families, which is a non-adjacent cell, not next to each other. Control shift down, taking us to the bottom, took us all the way to the bottom. I'm holding control backspace to get back to the top. I know these are a lot of keystrokes, but notice you don't have to use the keystrokes. You could use just click and drag, holding down control to get over here. However, the, the keystrokes will be faster. So I'm gonna to try to emphasize those as we go. I'm gonna to try to then be kind of where I wanna be with the graph so that when I insert it, insert tab, charts, scatter plot, the graph, we're basically located in general where we want to be. I'm gonna remove the title. We're gonna add the axes. So axes. And then on the X, the independent, we've got the population. And then on the Y, selecting the Y equals, we've got then the families. And so you can see this trend line, 
you know, it's a lot closer together here. Population goes up, you've got families go up. That kind of makes sense. So we're going to say, let's say we hit the plus button, make a trend line through that. Uh, we can add some details on the trend line. Let's say that we want the formula again. And we want, let's just make the trend line red this time. Uh, we'll make it a, a red line. So there's a standard line. It doesn't want to make it red. There it goes. All right. And then let's now, now notice that this is generally over here, the independent versus the dependent. But sometimes there's a question as to which, which is the independent, which is going to be the dependent uh, kind of variable. You can use the same graph to read it the other way. You could say, well, yeah, as, as families go up, the population goes up. But let's just make, let's see if we can flip these and put the families over here and the population over here just to practice that graphing technique. So we're going to say, all right, let's take, I can take these two again, but what I really want, these are, this one's on the left. Uh, so it's going to automatically plot it as though uh, it's going to be on the X axis and we'll have to then reverse it. So same starting point, control shift down. There's that one, control backspace, putting my cursor holding control down on I1, control shift down, and then I'm at the bottom, control backspace, and then I'm going to scroll to the right before I insert, put myself where I want the chart to be, and then insert charts, scatter, there's our scatter. But this time it looks similar, but this time we want to swap the X and Y's. So I'm going to go into the, to the chart design. I, I just go to the data and then I'm going to add, edit the data. So here's the X, here's the Y, they're backwards. So I'm going to go into the X, I'm going to delete what's in there. I'll select this one and then we're going to say in the X, I want the family. So I'm going to put my cursor. Well, I could just select the data on families, control shift down. So there is that one, control backspace back up. And then I'm going to say, all right, that looks good. And then in this one on the Y, I'm going to delete what's in there. And then I'm going to go into the population. I'll just go into the data here, control shift down. And so that looks good. And then control backspace back up to the top. And let's say, okay, and then, okay. So we've switched the X and the Y. So now I, I go down here and it looks like they have been switched because the 35 was on the X, 35 is on the Y now. So we've switched those. So it looks like a similar trend line, but now we've switched, you know, the X's and the Y's. So if I hit the plus button and I look at my axis titles, now on the X axis, we have scrolling up, uh, trying to move over to the right. We've got the families. And then on the Y equals, we've got the population. And I can add then my trend line. Uh, we can say let's plus button, trend line, adding more detail to the trend line, more options. And we could say, show me that formula bucket. Let's make it, let's make it green this time. Let's make it like a yellow line and then we'll make it. So then we'll go to the glow. And on the glow, we'll make like a, a medium size orange glow, something like that, just to be different. So I know I did those fairly quickly, but that's just, we've seen all these charts before. So these are a way that we can take a full data set and you can kind of make a bunch. Obviously you can make basically an endless amount of graphs from a, a, a set of, of data such as this, as we look at the relationships between multiple sets 
of data. We could put graphs on top of each other. We can make bar graphs and put them on top of each other. We can plot multiple uh, items on the same graph and so on uh, and so forth.